rasanya tu kita ke barisan hadapan sama-sama kita tegur lawan kita lawan kita jaga kita bersiap siaga putuskan rantaian oh covid 19 No sign of PM losing majority support. Two thousand two hundred and thirty-four new infections reported today. Hello and good evening. Thank you for joining us. You're watching News at 10 with me, Mohamed Amin Carlos. Well, there is no indication that Prime Minister Tansri Mohyeddin Yassin has lost the support of the majority of MPs in the Dewan Rakyat. Minister and the Prime Minister's Department for Parliament and Law, Dato Takiyuddin Hassan, said that following that, the 25 motions of no confidence and two motions of confidence listed as the 26th item and 27th item in today's order paper are not matters that need to be expedited. Saya suka menjelaskan bahawa kita tertakluk kepada peraturan 14 dan peraturan 15. Peraturan Mesyuarat 15.1 dengan jelas menyatakan bahawa urusan kerajaan hendaklah didahulukan daripada urusan-urusan lain. Memandangkan tidak ada langsung bentuk yang menggambarkan yang amat berhormat paguh hilang kepercayaan. Kerajaan berpandangan bahawa usul-usul tidak percaya dan juga usul-usul percaya merupakan satu usul yang melibatkan sesuatu yang tertentu dan kepentingan orang ramai saya percaya dewan menganggap itu bukanlah satu perkara yang perlu disegerakan Datuk Takiyuddin was answering a question from Pasir Gunang MP Hasan Abdul Karim who wanted to know when 25 motions of no confidence and two motions of confidence would be tabled debated and voted during the minister's question time in the Dewan Rakyat today However the minister said there should be no issue for any party to show support to any individual among the members of the Dewan Rakyat to become prime minister Well, the swearing-in ceremony of Perak Menteri Besar, which has been held three times since the 14th general election of GE14, is a reflection of a leadership failure among the assemblymen in securing solid support to enable them to focus their mind and energy to serve in the best interests of the people. The Sultan of Iraq, Sultan Nasrin Shah, said the three MB swearing-in ceremonies in two years had also created a new history for the Perak State Assembly. However, the Sultan said that was not a history to be proud of and it will be recorded in history as a reflection of failure, not a success. The ruler said the people of all races and religions in all state constituencies in Perang, either represented by Perikatan Nasional, PN, or Pakatan Harapan, PH Assemblymen, are having the same needs and hopes, suffering from similar struggles and seeking the same attention. Setiap ahli Dewan Negeri dipilih rakyat kerana rakyat mempercayai anda. Rakyat meletakkan harapan bahawa anda akan dapat membantu untuk menambah baik kawasan tempat tinggal mereka membantu menyediakan pelbagai keperluan dan perkhidmatan, membantu meningkatkan taraf ekonomi mereka, serta membantu memenuhi sebanyak mungkin keperluan sosial mereka. 
Sultan Nasrin said the people, especially the low-income earners and the poor, are those who have lost their jobs and income due to the COVID-19 pandemic, should not be left to suffer or die as a mouse deer caught in the fight of two elephants. Sultan Nasrin said a righteous man would preserve in enjoining what is right and forbidding what is wrong because, as he knows, that Allah will be his strength, protection and defense. The Sultan said this at the swearing-in ceremony of Kota Tampan Assemblyman Dato Sarani Muhammad as the 14th Menteri Besar of Perak at Istana Iskandaria, Kuala Kangsa. Dato Sarani replaces Dato Sri Ahmad Faisal Azumu, who resigned on 5th December after he failed to obtain the majority support of the State Assemblyman in a vote of confidence at the State Assembly sitting a day earlier. Well, there will be no changes in Perang State Budget 2021 and it will be tabled at the State Legislative Assembly as planned by the previous administration. The newly appointed Menteri Basan, Dato Sarani Mohammed, said it would only be approved at the State Executive Council level as a formality before being tabled. I tidak pikir kita ada masa untuk meneliti ataupun mengubah apa-apa isi kandungan dalam buku bajet yang telah pun dirangka, dibincangkan bersama oleh sebahagian daripada exco yang lama termasuk saya. Saya faham, saya tahu apa yang terkandung dalam buku itu bermakna kita tidak akan mengubah. Speaking at his first media conference after taking his oath of office as Menteri Besar at Istana Iskandaria, Dato Sarani said that the main agenda of his administration is to safeguard the people's well-being as a priority, especially in overcoming the COVID-19 pandemic. Therefore, he said the state government needs to ensure that the Perak budget 2021 is not only able to revive the economy, but also to help the people who are suffering due to this pandemic. Meanwhile, five Perak assemblymen have sworn in as state executive council members to form a new state government. The assemblymen took their oath before Sultan Nazrin Shah at the Istana Iskandaria at around 2.30 p.m. today. The new exco lineup consists of four AMNO assemblymen and one party Pribumi Bersatu Malaysia Bersatu Assemblyman. The AMNO assemblymen are Lintang Assemblyman Dato Muhammad Zolkafli Haru, Rungkup Assemblyman Dato Shahrul Zaman Yahya, Kampong Gajah Assemblyman Dato Dr. Dr. Wan Nurashikin Wan Nuruddin and Bota Assemblyman Khairul Shahril Muhammad. The sole Bursatu Assemblyman is Dato Zanul Fadzi Paharudin, who is also the party state secretary. The four Assemblymen from AMNO were previously excos under the leadership of former Menteri Besar Dato Sri Ahmad Faisal Azubu, while Dato Zanul has served as the latter's special advisor. Well, Malaysia records yet another all-time high of new daily COVID-19 infections with 2,234 cases reported today. In a statement, Health Director General Tan Sri Dr. Noor Hisham Abdullah said despite another 1,112 recoveries made in the last 24 hours, the number of active cases rises to 11,867. Explaining further, the Health DG said almost 64% of the new infections reported today were from Sulango with 1,428 cases. While well, he said the new daily infection figure from Klang Valley area is expected to remain high in the next few days, considering the migrant workers screening program conducted by social security organization SOXO and employers in the central region. He added that about 124 patients are currently being treated in the intensive care unit, with 60 of them requiring the ventilator support. The death toll rises to 396 after three new fatalities were reported today. Well, Town Street Dr. Noor Hisham also reported that the number of active clusters stands at 187 as three clusters declared inactive and another five discovered in Kuala Lumpur and Johor. Well, vaccination is a basic human right which must be respected and protected. Well, according to Foreign Minister Dato Sri Shamuddin Hussein, it is of utmost importance to strike a balance between efforts to curb the spread of COVID-19 and enforcing basic human rights. 
Well, he added that there exists a risk that global competition may cause an increase in prices of vaccines as well as medical treatment. Well, therefore, universal access to an affordable, priced, accessible and fair vaccine is crucial. In his speech during the opening session of the Global Human Rights Forum 2020 held virtually through the Wisma Putra social media, Dr. Sri Hishamuddin said a collaboration on a global scale is vital to ensure effective coordination of the United Nations efforts to promote global access to medicine, vaccines and medical equipment to stop the spread of COVID-19. Well, 217 people were apprehended yesterday for breaching MCO rules, with seven of them remanded and the remaining 210 issued compound fines. Well, according to Senior Minister for Security, Dato Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob, the most common offences conducted was not wearing face masks, with 99 of the total individuals having detained for the said offence. Other offences include not providing entry and exit logbooks at premises, not practising proper dis physical distancing and participating in nightclub-related activities. Meanwhile, Benteng yesterday saw the arrest of 67 illegal immigrants, two skippers, as well as four land vehicles and eight boats or ships seized. A total of 121 roadblocks were erected in accordance with Op Penawar, Op Benteng PDRM and Op Benteng Aksim. The senior minister also reported that 45 sanitation operations were carried out in 11 red zones, two orange zones, nine yellow zones and five green zones in 11 states yesterday. Inspector General of Police, Tantri Abdul Hamid Badur, today confirmed the presence of suspected acts of corruption taking place at the country's borders involving police personnel. Well, it said the Bukit Aman Integrity and Standard Compliance Department, JIPS, has been instructed to investigate the allegation. Ada beberapa bukti yang telah kita terima mengatakan berlakunya perkara yang yang apa, penyelewengan di kalangan pasukan yang bertugas di sana. So saya tidak malu membuat pengakuan ini sebab daripada mula saya sebutkan tadi bahawa ada masalah, ada masalah yang telah berlarutan sekian lama. Commenting further, he said all 10 departments within the police force will go all out to curb smuggling activities. Tansri Abdul Hamid said the smugglers are robbing the country's coffers due to the unpaid taxes connected to their activities. He added they not only smuggle cigarettes and alcoholic beverages, but drugs as well. The nation's top cop said he will not tolerate police personnel who are in cahoots with smugglers. Coming up, JASA allocation slashed by 45 million ringgit. Stay with us. Malaysia's Sustainable Development Goals, or SDG, performance improved in 2019 based on the achievement of the goals set. Minister and Prime Minister's Department for Economy, Dato Sri Mustafa Mohamed, said that good performance was recorded for all 17 goals. The 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development includes 17 goals based on five focus areas, namely people, planet, prosperity, peace and partnership. The goals are measured according to 247 indicators set at the global level in 2019. On indicator assessment, Dato Sri Mustafa said for Malaysia, 128 indicators or 52% were available while 73 indicators or 29% needed to be developed. He said the national SDG progress status was also measured based on the performance of 108 statistical indicators. Di antara perkara yang menunjukkan kemajuan pencapaian positif adalah di bawah bidang tumpuan kemajuan masyarakat di mana peratusan isi rumah yang hidup di bawah paras kemiskinan nasional telah bertambah baik kepada 5.6% pada tahun 2019 berbanding 7.6% pada tahun 2016. 
Dato Sri Mustafa said this today at the virtual launch of the SDG Indicators Malaysia 2019 report, and the second report of the country's SDG Indicators published by the Department of Statistics Malaysia. He added a total of 13% or 31 indicators are not available, while 15 indicators or 6% are not relevant to Malaysia. Well, he said that all elements comprising the five focus areas would be continued in the 12th Malaysia Plan or 12th MP after having been incorporated into the country's development policies such as the 11th Malaysia Plan and Shared Prosperity Vision 2030. The day one Raya today passed a motion to reduce the allocation for the expansion of the Department of Special Affairs or JASA by 45 million ringgit compared to 81.5 million ringgit previously proposed in the budget 2021. Day one Raya Speaker Dato Azhar Azizan Harun announced that the motion was passed by a majority vote after being debated by six MPs, three each from the government and opposition bloc. Well, the motion was proposed by Deputy Finance Minister Dato Abdul Rahim Bakri before the commencement of the debate at the committee level of the Supply Bill 2021 for the Ministry of Communications and Multimedia, KKMM. Now, Dr. Abdul Rahim said that JASA, which was being rebranded as the Community Communications Department, or JCOM, will have a different role as it is to build a digital ecosystem community, thus accelerating migration to the digital world. Well, he said the goal which had been set for the department was based on the federal constitution and the Rukun Nagara as the main thrust to develop the community, especially at the grassroots level. The Tourism, Arts and Culture Ministry of MOTAC will roll out several short-term initiatives to boost the domestic tourism industry. While speaking in Parliament today, its Minister, Dato Sri Nancy Shukri, said that the initiatives that would be introduced following the relaxation of restrictions on interstate and inter-district travel would include e-vouchers and rebates. Motek sentiasa bekerjasama rapat dengan penggiat industri pelancongan dalam berbincang mengenai SOP-SOP yang perlu kita amalkan pada waktu ini dan kepentingan untuk memastikan pematuhannya. Sebab itulah kita yakin bahawa penggiat industri pelancongan kita telah pun bersedia dalam aspek ini dari awal dan terus dibenarkan. Terus bergerak um, sepenuhnya, sebaik sahaja aktiviti pelancongan dibenarkan. She said this when responding to Wan Hassan Mohamad Ramli of Pas Dungun during Minister's Question Time. Wan Hassan had asked the Ministry to state its short-term strategies to promote domestic tourism after the easing of travel restrictions. Dr. Sri Nancy said the Rakyat will receive various incentives and promotions in the form of vouchers, rebates, e-vouchers, cash back in e-wallets and discounts for bookings for tourism packages, accommodation and transport. In other words, she said the government will give financial assistance or pay a certain portion of the spending for the Rakyat to travel domestically. Dato Sri Nancy said that the ministry will also focus on building confidence among the people and raise awareness that it is safe to travel domestically. Well, 13 out of the total 64 rural road projects of PJLB, which were approved under the 11 Malaysia Plan or 11 MP for the state of Sarawak, have fully completed construction. And according to Deputy Rural Development Minister 2, Dato Henry Sumagong, the ministry has also approved of four rural road connectivity projects worth 1.57 million ringgit at Kota Samarahan Parliamentary Constituency for the year 2020. Sebanyak 39 projek sedang dalam uh, peringkat per, perlantikan perunding dan reka bentuk. Tiga projek sedang dalam peringkat perolehan, sembilan projek dalam pembinaan dan tiga belas projek telah siap sepenuhnya. Meanwhile, a total of 285 million ringgit has been also allocated for electrical supply infrastructure projects for rural areas in Sarawak for 2020. This will involve 16 projects and is expected to be able to provide electrical supply to 3,200 homes. Well, the Siamese community in Kampung Wat Paya Mat Inson in Pendang Kedah 
is expected to enjoy upgraded broadband services within the next few months. The Malaysian Communications and Multimedia Commission, MCMC, assures to expedite the implementation and upgrading existing 3G services to 4G. Well, according to a statement by MCMC, they were informed of complaints due to the children in the aforementioned area being unable to study as the internet connectivity and speeds are not up to standards. Kadasi Exco, one Romani, one Salim and MCMC Chairman Dr. Fadrullah Suhaimi Abdul Malik yesterday had visited the villages in the area to come up with a solution. Telecommunication tower upgrade works in the village have already been planned with the relevant parties striving to complete it by February next year. This is in line with the National Digital Network Jandela Initiative with telecommunication companies aiming to achieve 4G coverage for 96.9% of the residential areas by the end of 2022 with the average internet speed increased to 35 megabits per second. Well, Sunday set as deadline for Brexit trade agreement. Coming up in our foreign segment. Well, gunmen shot and killed a female television journalist who was also a women's rights activist in Afghanistan in an incident that underscores an increasing trend of violence against journalists in the country. Malalai Maiwand, a reporter at Anikas Radio and TV in Nangahar, was killed along with a driver in an attack, their vehicle in Jalalabad, capital of the eastern province of Nangahar. And according to authorities, the attackers opened fire on Maiwand's car shortly after she left her house in eastern Nangahar province. The murder of Maiwand, who was in her 20s, comes just weeks after Radio Liberty reporter Alias Dayi was killed in a car bomb attack in Lankash Ga, taking the total number of journalists and media workers killed this year in Afghanistan to 10. Now, the area has been a hotbed of militant activity, most notably involving Islamic State, but no group immediately claimed responsibility for the attack. Any cars has been targeted before with its owner, engineer Zalmay, kidnapped for ransom back in 2018. My wand is also not the first of her family to be targeted as, a, as five years ago. Her mother, also an activist, was killed by unknown gunmen. The European Union and Britain will come to a decision on a post-Brexit trade deal by the end of the coming weekend. European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen tweeted after meeting with British Prime Minister Boris Johnson in Brussels. The emergency meeting between Johnson and von der Leyen to seek a post-Brexit trade deal has ended without breakthrough as very large gaps remain between the two sides. Johnson and von der Leyen have agreed that their negotiating teams will continue discussions over the coming days and the Prime Minister does not want to leave any route to a possible deal untested. Both leaders have agreed that a firm decision about the future of the talks should be taken by Sunday. The trade negotiations are at a crucial stage as time is running out for both sides to secure a deal before the Brexit transition period expires at the end of the year. Failure to reach a free trade agreement means bilateral trade will fall back on World Trade Organization WTO rules in 2021. In the world of sports, Italian World Cup winner Paolo Rossi dies age 64. Paolo Rossi, a hero of Italian football who inspired the national side to victory in the 1982 World Cup, has died age 64. Well, Rossi is best known for leading the Italian team to a World Cup victory in 1982 against West Germany after scoring six goals in the tournament, including a hat-trick against Brazil in the second stage. Widely regarded as one of the greatest Italian players of all time, Rossi won the Golden Boot at the 1982 World Cup in Spain as top scorer and the Golden Ball for the play of the tournament and in the same year, the Ballon d'Or 
European Footballer of the Year for his performances. While a member of Italian club Juventus, Rossi won two Italian Serie A titles, a European Cup and a Coppa Italia in his four years with the club. Rossi also played for AC Milan. After his soccer career, Rossi worked as a pundit for Italy's national public broadcaster, Rai. In football, Bayern Munich earned a 2-0 victory over Lokomotiv Moscow in their final Champions League Group A game on Wednesday after goals from Niklas Zule and Eric Maxim Chopomoti. Now the reigning Champions League winners who qualified for the round of 16 with two matches to spare fielded a largely second-string team with the pressure on the visitors to secure third place in the standing and a Europa League spot. Cleverly done. Bayern had the upper hand but carved out only few scoring chances in the first half with top goal scorer Robert Lewandowski sidelined due to a minor injury. The Bavarians came close with a Zula header and Joba Moting's back heel flick in the 53rd before a double chance from Gnabry who was denied by keeper Guilherme and volleyed the rebound narrowly wide. Guilherme was beaten in the 63rd minute when Douglas Costa whipped in a corner and Zula rose above two defenders to drill a power header past the keeper. Former Stoke City and Paris Saint-Germain attacker Tropo Moting doubled the lead in 10 minutes from time to lift Bayern to 16 points. The Bavarians are joined in the knockout stage by Atletico Madrid while Lokomotiv finished bottom on three points. And that well, meanwhile, in Madrid, Karim Benzema scored twice as Real Madrid overcame Borussia Mönchengladbach 2-0 at the Alfredo Di Stefano Stadium to seal a Champions League last 16 spot. Hello, it's caught. Real's shock defeat to Shakhtar last week threatened their record of qualifying from their group for the last 23 years, but as so often in the competition that forms such a large part of their identity, they stood tall when it mattered most. But this result was never really in doubt. As early as the ninth minute, they were in front through Benzema, as he was too strong for Matias Genta, rising to plant a header low to Jan Sommer's right and into the net. The visitors wasted a glorious chance to cancel out Benzema's opener when French winger Alassane Playa raced clear towards goal but bungled his attempt dink over Madrid goalkeeper Thibaut Courtois sending the ball wide. Gladbach were then undone once more by the Frenchman before the interval as Benzema rose to meet Rodrigo's cross to double Real's advantage with another trademark header. Zenadine Zidane's side finished top with 10 points while Gladbach came second with eight, pipping third place Shakhtar due to their better head-to-head -head record while Inter came fourth with six. In England, Sergio Aguero came off the bench to score for Manchester City as they cruise past Olympique Marseille 3-0 in Champions League Group C. Well, the result means the French team finished bottom of the group and failed to make the Europa League spot despite third-place Olympiacos losing 2-0 to group runners-up Porto. City were already assured of top spot and ahead of Saturday's Manchester Derby, rested keeper Addison and gave a start to American backup goalkeeper Zach Steffen. Spaniard Ferran Torres put City ahead three minutes after the interval, firing home from close range after a strong run into the box from Briad Mahrez. Argentine striker Aguero, who has struggled after knee surgery in the off-season, came off the bench in the 67th minute and took just 10 minutes to score, poking home after Marseille keeper Steve Mandanda failed to hold Nathan Arke's header from a corner. Substitute Raheem Sterling added the third with a tap in in the final minute. City finished on 16 points, a club record haul from the competition's group stage. Brazilian Otavio and Colombian Mateus Uribe were on target for Porto as they beat Greek side Olympiacos 2-0. And that's it from us this evening. In our top story, no sign of PM losing support in Dewan Rakyat. Well, folks, join us again at 12.30 p.m. on TV2 tomorrow for more updates. I'm Mama Damien Carlos. Thanks for watching. Good night and you take care.